Hello and welcome to the second part of the Van Gogh Alive Reaction Studio Buddies episode. Uh, I chopped this in half, so if you haven't seen the first part, then please go and watch the first part now. I'll put a link in the description and a link up here if I can. I think it's I think it's in that direction. A little uh, card link there for the first part. And it was basically um, an exhibition which I didn't attend, but we're both reacting to because we have the video. So uh, part one was fun. We had quite a lot of criticism of certain aspects of it, but lots of beautiful artwork and um, the music unfortunately I had to take out because I can imagine that'll be copywritten so um, so yeah this is part two so let's get started this is another episode of Studio Buddies doing a podcast with a little gay guitar okay let's get started <laughs> I think um, this one goes into more of his Japanese style art. Yeah. Um, which I I, I really like. I think he does an absolutely amazing job. And I really like the fact that this part on the floor, they haven't decided to put something different. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was having to look around the screens which had non-Vincent content on there. Yeah. Because I thought he's gonna have to block that out and put blinders on. Because I just couldn't. Yeah. I, don't know, I couldn't kind of remove the feeling of frustration that it's having to be jutted up against a completely ineffective video. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I just can't. I can't imagine who curated that and thought, "Yeah, we've nailed it." I Good don't idea. know. I don't get it. I mean, imagine it without these floating petals. Yeah. You lose nothing. Yeah. I mean, that's not Vincent's work, is it? That's what inspired him by the looks of it. Yeah, but it's the fact that these petals are just white blodges. Yeah. Like, even if they'd have done it in his style, I think it would have been much more effective. Yeah. And I understand that they might have tried to do it as more of, like, a cinematic experience, but I don't know. And then again, this part on the floor where it's just a picture, why? Yeah. It's, it's like dumbing it down. That's how I see it. It feels like it's being dumbed down for the audience. Yeah, definitely. Did you get the time for that one? I did, thanks, yeah. Okay. That was curious. Was that his actual drawing or did they do that? This is, I have no idea about that, you know. I'm going to have a look and see if I can find whether this is his original work because I don't recognise this as his work, but if it is... Then brilliant. I mean, it looks it looks more like it now than the previous stuff they've shown. Well, I know this... that this stuff is his his work, but I mean that drawing that we just saw. Yeah, potentially. I mean, the one before that, though. Sorry, that's what I thought you were asking about. The image before they showed the drawing didn't look the same as this. It looked like someone else's work. Was it? I think that was, was definitely that his work. Yeah. Really, was it? Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I don't know it then. And I know the other stuff. This is his as well, but I was just a bit 
taken aback by that drawing that they did in between the the bluish painting and this one. Yeah. Because I don't know if that was him. It seemed to line up quite suspiciously close, didn't it? Where yeah. it makes you think that they've kind of scored along it. But if it's not, then it goes to his credit for having a different style of mark making to what he usually does and for it to be so accurate with the painting. Yeah. But I was a bit thrown by this style. I didn't think, I mean, I recognise the blue and uh, the blue sky and the branches. But I didn't recognise these colours. I it just, the only thing that I recognise this from is the one where he's wearing the bandage on his ear. Yeah. Because it's got an image like this in the background, kind of, anyway. Um, but yeah, so that's the only reason why I thought this looks like his. Plus, up close you can see the brush marks. But yeah. otherwise... Um, yeah, otherwise I was a bit thrown by that myself. Yeah. Okay. No way, is that his drawing as well? I think so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't I don't know a lot of this. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to I, do more research. I feel like the the portrait that we've just seen, hmm. and this is just my personal opinion, I don't feel like it's as strong as his other stuff. No. Because I I don't know, it it seems like he doesn't have as much of a personal tie to it, which could be why I think that way. Yeah, yeah, he's inspired more than he is actually connected with it emotionally. Yeah. But um, this is so illustrative. I mean, not to detract from his work, but it's because of how he's done the bridge. I don't know, parts of it just look... I would have never guessed this is Vincent. It's yeah. very much... I mean, it looks more modern. So it's to his credit, if anything. Because it looks yeah. far more modern. Okay. Oh. Weird. Ah, oh, magic. Yeah. Oh no, what are you doing? Why? <laughs> Why is it swirling that way? Oh god. This is the first time on studio videos you'll see me angry and shouting. It's just like, don't insult him. Oh my god. I don't understand. Uh, I want oh. to put my fingerprints in, in Vincent's work, and that's basically it. Yeah. Oh, I don't like so it. Annoying. Yeah. No, me neither. Mm. I have to avert my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Is this trying to refer to? The fact that he drank absinthe. I'm assuming so. I mean, again, it just seems like, how can we tell this story? It's like, better than that. With yeah. his paintings. His paintings only. He painted bar rooms. He painted, you know, the actual environment. You don't need to put in a label of an absinthe bottle from a modern day bottle. Yeah. It's weird. That, yeah. I don't like that. Great music, though. Mm.
glass. Look how he's done the ear. Yeah. There you go. So good. Look at that face. God. Wow. That face is so good. I think this goes on to uh, the portraits of people that he knew. Ah, uh, right, okay. Yeah, look at that baby. Yeah. <laughs> look how chubby its cheeks are. <laughs> what's your, so just whilst we're on the pause for a moment, what's your memory of walking through and seeing this in person? Was it, were people milling through the screens or were they, how was it set up? Um, no, it was, um, it was really weird because like, as you can see in the, in the pause screen here, there's places for people to sit, but the amount of people that were, were that was there, it was people stood like in the middle, and I kind of sat. I'm not sure which end it was, but it was more towards the the part with the projection on the floor, mm. so that I could kind of see everything around me. Because at first we were stood in the corner, and it was like I don't know. I just wanted to sit down to be honest. Yeah. So I sat down on the floor. Um, it was great. I mean, like, these really long screens, they were massive. Yeah. Like, absolutely huge. The only thing that I didn't really like about the experience, I'm like, this isn't me dissing on children, but it was the fact that kids were, like, running constantly and, you know, they just didn't seem interested. Um, and I think, like, even as a, like, me as a child, I probably would have been doing the same. Yeah. Me too. But, yeah, that was the most irritating part for me. Yeah. Yeah. I just... I don't know. It seems to me, if there were people stood there or sat on those seats, it would obscure parts of the painting. Yeah. So the fact that they are to the ground seems to me they should have maybe been suspended more in the air so that people visiting would either see the whole thing or... I don't know. I mean, there's yeah. got to be a way for everyone to see something because it seems like I would be very frustrated there. Um, and as well, like with the people standing around, they would be in the way of the projectors as well. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. So you'd have like silhouettes of people like on top of this, um, which was quite frustrating because I just wanted to see the work. Yeah. But yeah, it's not like I could just go in on my own. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just be like, can you take out the animation and the bits of real footage and photographs and just leave in Vincent's work and you don't even need to play the music. I'll just look at his yeah. work scrolling past. Um, yeah. But yeah, it does seem like a lot of the production is what I'm critiquing. I think both of us have got frustration with the the whole production of the exhibition as opposed to the scale is beautiful, the colours are, are great and uh, the images just yeah. look better and better the larger you see them. It's just a shame that they are a bit fleeting where that amazing portrait at the end of the Japanese section has just come and gone where you don't even get to study it. Yeah. So, yeah, hit and miss. Uh, yeah, I've, I've definitely. Got time, yeah. I like this. I like this scanning just yeah. across the screen. That worked well enough.
you mind pausing it here? Yeah. Oop. Pause. There <laughs> we go. So you're saying they actually built that room for you to go into the painted version yeah. of the room. Yeah. Because that, again, it's, it's just arresting to see how well he's created an environment out of paint. That, um, I think initially when I saw that painting, maybe I saw a different version of it. I didn't realise how well he'd done the perspective, but he's done this perspective really well there, actually. At least I think it was this room. I mean, I could be wrong, and my memory isn't the, the mm. best. Um, I think it was this one. Um, but like I said, I didn't go in there. There was loads of people. Mm. Um, but the the way they'd done it, it was like they'd built the room and then like painted it in his style. Oh, wow. So it was like stepping into the painting. Um, and I noticed that like loads of people were getting their pictures taken and I just... I didn't want that. No. Like I was happy to just take a picture of it and walk yeah. away. Yeah. I think if I were to go there and think I was going to get my picture taken in his room, I think I'd spend a lot of time making sure that one, I went there when no one else was there so that my picture would be just me in the room. Plus two, I'd get makeup done on my face to make myself look like one of his paintings, one of his characters. You know? And as well, this was during the pandemic. Yeah, that's what that's what I just heard as well. Um, yeah. So that is just problematic for, for someone like me who's taken such a hard stance against infection. Um, the return to things like this yeah. are, are kind of a mixed bag for me to uh, accept. But there we go. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who doesn't realise, I've been in lockdown since 2020 and I'm not coming out of it anytime soon, depending on, you know, how the story goes. But so far it's not progressing very well so yeah yeah i appreciate seeing a video like this because i think if i was there i'd be frustrated and agitated with trying to stay away from other people the yeah people. Uh, yeah That's the movement. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't enjoy the painting if it's not wobbling a little bit. Just for context, um, I think this part is um, his letters, so his actual handwriting, I think. Okay. I need to put this on Do Not Disturb as well, it's really annoying. Yeah, it's only been for this clip, yeah. Will aeroplane mode work? Yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, but yeah, these are like his handwritten letters, I think. Mm. Have you got the sound for that nice. one? I have, thank you, yeah.
weird. Why? <laughs> just weird. The way oh, they animated the paper as well just looks so yeah. unnatural. Yeah. It's just inorganic. But I did think the start of this with the different coloured text was beautiful and I thought I'd love, you know, for him to be able to see how honoured he is all around the world and how beloved he is because I think it would bring a tear to his eyes just to think yeah. of how much of an impact he's had on the world and on history. Um, yeah, it's very sad. It makes it such a tragic kind of legacy that he leaves yeah. that he's never going to know how appreciated he is even if it is slightly besmirched by the modern attempts to liven things up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's still um, just seeing his writing with such powerful music choked me up a little bit at first until I was like, what's that? What are they doing? Yeah. I was like, oh, right, yeah, that wasn't enough for them. <laughs> they got bored. It's like they gave it to a bunch of, you know, preteens or something. Sorry, no offence to preteens. You're probably not that bad, but... Whoever it is, it's probably to boomers, what am I talking about? But whoever it is, it's to someone who's just, again, just doesn't want to give the audience enough credit yeah. to let them watch it as it is, because it plays well enough. Pretty, you know, that's why I had to interject on that painting going, where's the movement? Why isn't it waving a little bit? Because I was like, it's perfect as it is. You don't need a little warble in there. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Good music for this as well. Can you pause it there, do you mind? Yeah. I just realised we haven't paused it for a while and I'm trying to <laughs> make sure that we don't just uh, get copyright strikes for... That bit was amazing. There was no animation, <laughs> there was no interruption to his work. Some of it, again, was a little bit too brief for me, but all in all, it was just powerful to see his marks and his masterful work. I think uh, that's the one time where I didn't mind the fact that the work changed with the music because I felt like it fit a lot better. Yeah, yeah it was fair. It was, uh, it was a good, suitable type of music for what we were looking at. Yeah. Because it just sounds like the music is describing what we're seeing anyway, so it just really gelled. Um, yeah. 
Again, it's just the colours. One thing which really always strikes me with Van Gogh is the colours are just so magnificent that that's part of what's so captivating about his scenery. Excuse me, indigestion. Um, is his uh, choice of colours, his palette is really kind of, to me, I think it's bright, but it's tertiary. It's not, you can see it's been mixed with white. Yeah. But it's not straight out of the tube. He's he's watered it down, not watered it down, but you know he's diluted it with, you know, white as well as another colour to mix it. Yeah. Um, so that's what I love about it. I love tertiary mixes. It's what my brother does a lot of, and um, I think it is the way to go. And yeah, it's it's just got this way of the brush marks are. Just again, just that that magic of all sat in this perfect unified effort to show direction and texture and I don't know it's, it just seems like he's showing so much with such a minimal kind of amount of application of those strokes because they're such big strokes yeah it's describing things which most people would use small brushes to get all of the detail in and he's describing it so well with bigger strokes it, it's strange um I think that's what's like so hard for me to wrap my head around with Vincent's work. It's not applied to everything. I don't know if yeah. you've noticed, but he does imp imp I keep saying impressionism. It's expressionistic brush marks in certain areas and not others, which is why I'm I'm constantly like looking at the screen really close. Is that I'm trying to really soak up as much information as I can to try and figure out how he's balanced it, not to copy but to learn because it's yeah. just so much to learn from there. Um, you know pulling detail away really adds a lot to his pieces where if he would have gone more detailed I don't know I just feel like it would have detracted from what he achieved yeah but I suppose it's easy to say once you've got that body of work at the time if I was his peer at the time I probably would have said it's not going to hurt to put a face on there Win uh, Vincent it's probably not going to hurt to put a, a bit of shadow on the clothing there and in truth, because he didn't, because he left certain things just washed out as far as that as a human being with an apron on, you know, in the field and did it without clear light and shadow, that was, I don't know, that was achieved well enough without that additional application of uh, light source and and real yeah. heavy uh, shadow or anything. So that's, that's, that's all I was thinking, yeah. lights kind of annoy me a little bit did you see the head again i didn't was the head there again was it yeah got away with it this time wow <laughs> but yeah it's just dawned on me that the lights aren't necessary because they're like they're lit screens i love this word. unless it's the projector but it's facing the wrong way you know, it's the lights are coming from behind the screens that we're looking at. Unless they're projected onto the screens behind. Maybe. I think for this footage they could have turned those off. I don't know. I could be wrong. These paintings are amazing. Harry Potter to me. Yeah, just indulging themselves in some modern twists. Yeah. Why? Why, guys? I'm not a fan. No, I mean, in case I have cut all the music out, this is that. I'm not even going to do an impression of it. I was about to try and do an impression of it with my mouth, but it's like Harry Potter music, like Jamie said. Yeah. Let's take our word for it. Show it once without the movement. What are you doing? 
Why are some of them moving and some of them aren't? <sighs> they're just, oh man, they're completely... I, I just, I don't get the idea behind, we'll add a shimmer to it. You don't have to with any of it. You could have shown this without your introduction of just stars moving a lot. Well, not even stars, just a, oh, annoying, yeah. so annoying. You don't need to do this. We could have just looked at this painting for that amount of time and been quite happy. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm not going right. to not interrupt this. Is this going to be <laughs> with their audio cue? I think so, yeah. Listen to crows over wheat fields. These paintings are all amazing. I'm starting to really appreciate the lack of animation. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> Me too. Can you pause for a second? Yeah. Just remind yourself when you look at things like this, there was no photographs. He didn't do any of this from a photographic reference. This was all plein air. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's obvious to a lot of people, but once in a while I forget. And when I'm watching this type of presentation, I just remind myself, he's done all those cottages and that woman in her garden and all the types of scenery and this this chap here walking in the forest or the woods all of plein air all just out there in the elements painting and he may have finished it back home but he captured a lot of this out outside yeah uh, it's just astonishing i think i know that he would do um initial sketches and then base the paintings on those sketches as well um, That's correct. A lot of okay. his work was from memory as well. Yeah, I did hear that actually, which is brilliant. That's yeah. the expressionistic side as well, where his feelings would inject into the memory. It is predominantly plein air though, which is yeah absolutely amazing. Yeah, admirable. I think we should do more. Yeah. <laughs> Together. Definitely. Sky in that is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean that.
very abstract. Yeah. I just want to say, like, regardless of the animation, this music, like, I I have goosebumps again. Yeah. I I feel yeah. like it. I feel like this was a w- was a good music choice. Absolutely, it's yeah. really grandiose. It really speaks to the epic scale of what you see and being achieved in paint. Yeah. It really does it justice. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But the animation's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I love animation. Oh, there it is. There's an absolute injustice doing those crows that way. Yeah. Not even looking like his crows. Do you get what that referred to, though? Is that supposed to be his shot or something on himself? or? Yeah, him being shot. Him being shot, yeah. Yeah, really, because... Again, going it, off the, uh... I don't care what anyone says. He didn't <laughs> shoot himself. He was shot by someone else. Okay? No. Yeah, it is a good... Um, it's a good bit of detective work in Loving Vincent, which yeah. suggests that it wasn't a suicide. Um, but it does suggest that he kind of was in such a poor mental state that he was refusing medical assistance yeah. for a large part of the time after being shot, which is not the same as a suicide or shooting himself. So, yeah, I remember so. like being there, though, and when this part happened, like my heart just sank. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a shame that if it is called Crows Over Wheatfield, I'm sure it's called something like that. Sorry, if you can hear that siren. Don't know if you can hear that. I can hear yeah. that, yeah. Okay, it's fading now. Um, I think it is called Crows Over Wheatfield. The one thing which was a shame is that they didn't have they didn't have it actually clearly in one image at all. It was all parts yeah. of it, which is amazing to see up close, but I really wanted to see... The whole painting on a large screen yeah um which don't get me wrong it's a small note because it was lovely music again we get it um, there's an emergency <laughs> we're trying to do a podcast how inconsiderate you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> terrible uh, i read down this time 654 i have um so yeah, I can imagine that is yeah, yeah, sinking from that. Uh, yeah. I think the, the animation though is terrible as well. Yeah. One thing doing like that weird little wobbly wave was completely didn't add anything and then um, the crows just looked terrible. Yeah. They're just kind of like like birds never look. Birds never do that. They don't flop like that in the air. No.
That doesn't even look like his painting. No. Amazing. I mean, I can kind of see it in the beard. Yeah. Um, yeah, and on the sides of his head. Yeah, but the actual face itself. One thing yeah, just... I will say. Mm -hmm. The nose is slightly off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's got it kind of kinked up at one side and it's kind of skewed over to the side, which it would be tilted the other way, surely, if it hadn't been broken over to that side of his face. But the eyes are just so powerful. Yeah. The the little bit of, you know, orangey red underneath the eye lid is beautiful. The way that he's rendered the uh, eyeball is piercing. Yeah. And just all this shadow in the pits of the eye socket are really amazing. I just never see him normally paint like that. I'd normally see him paint like the one on the right hand side, which again I think the eyes are really piercing. Yeah. Like, absolutely brilliant. So yeah, shocking. Wow. There you go. Well done, Vincent. They um, they didn't show all of his work, did they, by quite a long shot? No. It... Um, there was repeated pieces which they put in and they omitted most of his drawings and quite a lot of his painting as well. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, the music, some of the music choices were really good there. I, I really liked it. And seeing it on a big screen, seeing the small details really large. Yeah. Just heightened how how much you can appreciate his work. Um, yeah, that was really interesting. It wasn't what I expected. I, I think I imagined there'd be narration or something. No, it, it, was, it was just that, yeah. Um, yeah. And then off into another room was the... The room that had all of the sunflowers um, with the the mirrors, um, that was a tiny space. Um, I think I've got pictures of that as well that can be inserted. <laughs> um, but yeah, like we we went and watched that, had a look around the sunflower room, um, and then we went to the gift shop. Mm. Yeah, and that's where you found a few items that you've come I, back with i did do you want to talk about those a little bit as well so i got um this magnet if it's gonna focus that would be <laughs> fab oh it, Plus we'll try and there do you go there's inserts for all of them if we can the fridge magnet um it's gonna take a while to focus back to me as well <laughs> um this is the i'm still out of focus the book that I got that I'll do like a, a little flick through mm. um, as an insert 
Um, I also got the book that we had mentioned um, yeah. that I read pretty much straight after. Um, yeah. It was my substitute uh, from playing games. I just read the entire thing. Um, the little USB, which I've already shown, um, it's yeah. upside down. Uh, come on, you can do it, camera. I believe in you. <laughs> That's as good as it's going to get. And it's got that same like print as the yeah. fridge magnet. So you're just seeing my hand. Um, no, it's, I, I know what you're talking about, though, because it's the Japanese um, yeah. one with the sky in the background, the branches. And then I got two frames. So it's obviously a print, um, yeah. but Starry Night Lovely. that just sits on my wall. And then mm. the next one. Oh, wow. Yeah, I love it. Yep. So they just sit in my front room. Um, oh, amazing. And it was, it was great. It was a really good time. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Wow, well, that was really uh, quite a lot to, to yeah. kind of soak up because it's so many amazing paintings. It makes you want to paint. So the thing is that I think because you've sent me that video, because we were considering different ways of how we could film this episode, yeah, um, I'm definitely going to go back and watch that again and stop it and paint yeah, or play it and paint whilst it's playing because um, it makes me want to paint, which is what the greats do, really. Yeah. I need a similar thing for Claude Monet, but obviously it's not going to have the same emotional impact, but it'll be at least... There's, there's videos on YouTube where it's got all of Claude Monet's work set to classical music, and it is just beautiful things to absorb and to inspire you to get painting. Yeah. So that with uh, Vincent. I can imagine they'll have Vincent ones as well online. But yeah, so I, I've got mixed feelings about the presentation, but all in all, it was a treat to see it on large screens. I think I was a bit frustrated with seeing it disjointed you know yeah. the bits on some vertical screens and some on horizontal screens and I was kind of a bit like I, I, I don't know something about me is just kind of jars with some of that where I'm like I want to see it clean just show me it clean once because I'm I've got this kind of urge to see something how it was presented yeah you know but I suppose that's not the point of what the presentation was so Van Gogh alive yeah. What does it say? The experience. We've uh, got two minutes left. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, then perhaps we should cut and do the outro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, um, yeah, that was really interesting and enjoyable and uh, a lot of different thoughts and feelings. I hope everyone enjoyed it at yeah. home. Um, yeah. Uh, if you want to see any of our work, at all have a look for mine at simon says underscore artwork at on instagram um, mine is at art by jamie thomas on instagram as well and on my facebook page cool yeah, yeah. i mean i've got a facebook page but it's probably not worth looking at because i don't i haven't <laughs> been on there for years so yeah whatever you can do um but yeah if you did like the episode it always helps us if you could like the video because it's going to help us in the algorithm you know, and leave a comment because nobody leaves a comment. So leave a comment, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the notification bell because when we upload, it might not tell you even if you are subscribed. Yeah. And then um, then you'll keep up to date with the videos. But yeah, thank you for watching. And this has been another episode of Studio Buddies doing a podcast with a little gay guitar. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>